One of my favorite quotes is from a gentleman by the name of Christopher Lash who said, Every day we get up and we tell ourselves lies so we can live. The lie that we tell ourselves in America is that we can just go ahead and live our lives and America will continue to be free and safe and prosperous. That's a lie. Our founders understood, in fact, they said it, that actually writing freedoms into the Constitution and into our First Amendment was the easy part. The hard part was keeping America free over time. That is the duty of all of you. That is the duty right now. This election, 2010, is the most important election of our lifetime. Not, and this is important, not because dramatic changes are going to happen if Republicans and conservatives take control of the House and Senate. There will not be dramatic changes. This is something that's very important to understand, to set as leaders, you're here because you're leaders, to set the expectations properly for those who you are leading across America. Barack Obama will still be president November 3rd, 2010. And he will not be for repealing Obamacare. He will, be, he will not be for reducing taxes. He will not be for cutting spending. There should be no popping of champagne corks on November 2nd, irrespective of the size of the victory. It is simply a step. Just like 2006, when the Democrats took control of the House and Senate, was a step, but it was 2008 when they took the presidency and a supermajority in the Senate, I underscore that, a supermajority in the Senate allowed them to do big things. You want to do big things in America? There are three times in American history where really big things happened, really big, that changed government. The New Deal, the Great Society, and the last two years under President Obama with Obamacare. What was the common denominator? Yes, liberal presidents. Yes, majorities in the House by liberals. But the most important thing, the exclusive thing, the only time it happened during those hundred, that 100-year hundred period of time, filibuster-proof majority in the Senate. You want to see the kinds of things that Americans, the Tea Party folks are talking about in America happen? You have to be laser beam focused on getting as many gains as we can in this election, particularly in the Senate. I would add maybe Delaware would be a good place to spend some time. And then don't pick your head up. Stay focused. 2012, if, you were you, if we want to restore limited constitutional government, if we want to continue to have a country that is free, safe, virtuous, and prosperous, where people of faith have, are welcome into the public square, it's the next two elections that are going to make all the difference. Don't get down on Republicans and conservatives because they weren't be able to do big things in 2011 and 2012. They won't have the votes. We have to be focused. We have to be smart. Are you up for doing this? Yeah. I'll close with you with something that I, that I think is just a little perspective. I'm asking you to do great things. This is a critical time in American history. I always like to talk about the greatest generation of Americans, those who served our country bravely during the war years. What made them the greatest generation of Americans? Were they somehow special, different than you, better than us, more virtuous, more moral? More courageous? No. No. What made them the greatest is they were confronted at a time when America needed them and they stepped up and met the challenge. That made them great. But let me remind you that the greatest gen of, generation of Americans didn't rush to the challenge. The greatest generation of America on June 14th when France fell and Europe was covered with darkness, when Stalin and Hitler were together and tyranny ruled, 
America did nothing. The greatest generation did nothing. Hit, excuse me, when Churchill that night pleaded over the radio for America to come and join them and successively pleaded as the bombs were dropping on the Battle of Britain, as London was being leveled, Americans did nothing. When a ship of Jews came to this country about the atrocities that were occurring on the continent of Europe, we sent them back. The greatest generation of Americans. I say that to you because it took Pearl Harbor to rally the American spirit. It took something horrific. Once you wake Americans, once you stir them up, there is no limit to what we can do. But it is hard to get us stirred up. We tend to think things will work out, things will get along. My big concern is, yes, I heard, we're stirred up. Yes, you're stirred up now. But now is not enough. We've got to be longer term. We've got to win this time and win big. And we've got to keep going. We have to keep going between now and 2012. I want to thank you. I know I'm talking to the choir. You're here. But sometimes the choir has to go out and sing solos. And I'm asking every one of you for the future, not for your grandchildren. I wish I was just worried about your grandchildren. But for your future, your children's future, sing loudly, sing proudly, sing courageously, sing strongly for the greatness of America. God bless you. Thank you, Senator. Something tells me we have not heard the last from him.